Hi everyone, how you doing? So this week I thought that we would balance out last week's um, serious conversations update <laughs> with uh, a little bit of humour and a little bit of fun. Um, so today's update is sponsored by the letter V and the word vanity. So taking a leaf out of the Sesame Street book, I thought I'd share a little bit about how I am preparing myself for this journey. So I don't think that I'm massively vain, um, but I like hair, I like makeup, I like clothes, I like shoes. Um, I'd like to feel good about myself. And um, one of the big things with HSCT is that the chemo causes you to lose your hair. And people um, have asked me if, oh, can you use the cooling cap? Um, but unfortunately we can't. So most people end up bald at some point in the journey. And I have always been the type of person who's been a bit dramatic about hair and uh, been pretty attached to it. I've had long hair um, more than I haven't. Um, and probably the shortest I've ever gone before is about here. Um, I did once end up having my hair cut very short at university, but that was a misadventure with being a hair model where they only shaved half my head. And when I cried to my friend and said, they've only shaved half my head, she was like, oh no, it's fine. You can, I'm sure that you'll look amazing with a short haircut. And I was like, no, no, they've only shaved half my head. So they shaved this side of my head, but not this side. Um, but uh, so when I was chatting with my kids and, telling them about what I was going to be going through and trying to prepare them for it. They seemed a bit thrown by the thought of me being bold. So I really felt like this was a, a space that I should step up and show them that it doesn't really matter and it's not really that important and that I am more than my hair <laughs> and it might be a bit strange, but it's fine. So in order to do that, I chatted with the local hairdresser. I've had a lot of fun. They've been amazing. So nice, so kind. And we have tried out lots of different hairstyles and <laughs> tried out lots of different colours. And I'm a bit of a different shade of blonde now, but the first blonde was platinum blonde. And they were like, we're a little bit concerned that it might fall out. I was like, that's okay, because it's going to fall out anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so we just went straight and we went very, very blonde and then warmed it up a bit. And it's been really freeing and it's been a lot of fun <laughs> and I've really enjoyed it. And I'm not as scared. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to cry when I have to shave my head. And But I don't think that'll be about the hair. I think that'll be about mentally preparing myself for the treatment and what I'm going to be going through. Um, I've had alopecia before and that is, that's different. Um, I really struggled with that and I think people do. Um, so when I've had it before, I, I lost the entire crown of my head and it was the not knowing if it was going to grow back or not. Um, and then it did grow back and it fell straight out again. And I'm really pleased that I have taken the time to have fun and that I've been so wonderfully supported um, in doing that. So I have another hairdresser's appointment booked in before the buzz. So I'll go for something different again and uh, hopefully that'll be fun. Um, the other thing that I have had done is I have had my eyebrows microbladed. And when I told Dom this, he was like, what is this? What is what? Excuse me. <laughs> so microblading, for those that don't know, is a semi-permanent tattoo where they use a, um, a really fine blade to draw individual hairs on for your eyebrows. Um, although I love all things makeup and hair and, and all of that, I am rubbish with makeup. And the thought of trying to draw on eyebrows <laughs> when I don't have any to begin with, um, just scared me too much. So again, um, an amazing business near us uh, in my local village took, um, took the time to fit me in. So it's really important when, if you do get microblading, 
before any kind of treatment that you have enough time to heal. So she took me through that and we made sure that we could um, do it and that I would be fully healed before any of my treatment started. So um, I know that quite a few women in the community get that done before they go for their treatment. So it's just something to consider, but you do need a significant period of time to get it done and get it all healed up. And then, so the next thing that I'm really looking forward to, and this is my final one, is I'm really looking forward to being able to wear heels again. So one of my big first relapses was foot drop and I used a walking stick for nearly a year. And it took a really long time to recover from. And I managed to build the strength back up and managed to get back to wearing heels occasionally. Um, but it's not been something that I've been able to do. Um, and I've noticed that recently it's really bad again. I've not been able to walk in heels for about 18 months now. And as I get more stressed <laughs> trying to balance everything, um, I've noticed that my foot drops back quite badly. So today I fell twice. I fell after dropping my kid off at school. Um, I just had a foot spasm and I went and the other foot couldn't hold me and I wiped out and that was embarrassing. And then um, the other situation is quite common too. I tripped going up the stairs. So for me, that's normally one of my first warning signs that my foot isn't raising up as high as um, it's meant to and so I'll trip up the stairs. <laughs> um, so I'm really, really hopeful that the treatment will help with the foot drop and that doing the physio and hopefully having no further attacks will give me the opportunity to get the strength back. And so, yes, it's a little bit vain to say that I want to be back in high heels, but what I really mean is I'm really, really looking forward to my feet doing what I want them to do and not having to consciously put the effort into moving my feet, placing my feet, being careful on uneven surfaces and things like that. So that's it for me. I know, um, I know for different folks in the community, you might have different needs when it comes to walking. So if you've got foot drop, maybe you can't wear the type of sandals that you want to wear because the edges of the toes catch or you're not quite lifting it up properly. Or if you have to wear a foot brace that you have to wear different types of footwear that you might not want to wear with whatever outfit it is that you're wearing. Um, so I get it. And I think that I think we're allowed to miss the things that we used to be able to wear and miss the things that we used to be able to do and be hopeful that we can do them again in the future. So that is this week's update. A little bit of silliness, but with good reasons underneath. So if anybody else has gone through this, really, really recommend that you have a bit of fun with your hair, if that's what you want to do. There have been some brave folks that have gone from waist length hair straight to the buzz cut. And that is not me. I, I couldn't have done that. Um, and do the things that you want to do, treat yourself to the things that make you feel good about yourself. And hopefully I'll be able to go out dancing and wear high heels and be the life and soul of the party again soon. If you have any questions, um, please do let us know. And um, thank you so much for following along. Thank you so much to all the people that take the time to comment or take the time to share. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. And I'm really looking forward to sharing the rest of this journey with you all. Bye.